Hey guys, it's Julie. I'm back for another story. I had quite a few people who sent me not only very nice comments, but even nice inbox messages that asked for another story. I'm full of them. My husband says, ah, too full of them. And he's making ugly faces back there. So if I start laughing, don't mind me. But the story today is going to be about Henry and Brodus. I don't know if this one has an herbal slant to it. It may. But it also has a message in it. Most of the things that I talk about, they always have a message in it. And the name of the story, like I said, is Henry and Brodus. Uh, of course, we heard the story about little Henrietta when she had to go to New York. And she just hated it so much up there. And she finally got back home to her mother. Well, when she came home, she was 17. Two more years later, it was time for her to get married. She married a man named Brodus. We're going to have to have a little backstory on Brodus. Brodus was a throwaway child. Throwaway child is a child that no one in the community wants or maybe just could not take care of. When he was born, his mama died, and his daddy came in and took one look at him and said, that wet's too little for me to take care of. I got things to do. And off he went. They didn't see him anymore. And Granny Teague, she's the one that took care of him. He stayed with Granny Teague for six years. But it wasn't a happy time. She didn't hug him, didn't kiss him. Go get this. Go get my spit cup. Go on out there and feed the mule. You got to get started on that corn. Now, that was a lot of hard work for such a young child. One day, Brodus comes in from the field. He's almost seven years old, and Granny Teagues is still laying in the bed. That is not her way. She's died. So they have the funeral, and the community has to decide what are they going to do with Brodus. So he goes from house to house to house until he's a man of 16 and decides he's had enough he's had enough beatings enough meanness enough stinginess with the food Brodus don't you dare get another piece of cornbread you've had quite enough how's a growing boy to go out there and plant those fields and care for those animals if he don't have a belly full he didn't know so Brodus grew up kind of learning his way watching watching everybody were they going to be mean were they going to be nice were they going to say something spiteful and mean because he didn't have a mama and daddy? Or were they going to be nice to him just because they wanted something? You know how that is. Well, he sees Henrietta one day. She's out there in her front yard. She's minding her mama's flowers. He's walked past this field several times and seen her out there walking around and thought, that's a quiet, pretty girl, but thought she surely wouldn't want me. What he did not realize is months earlier, Henry had already picked him out. She saw him out in the fields with his mule one day. He's standing out there just talking. I don't care what they say. They ain't going to make me go live with them. I'm going to live by myself. Because Brodus has the farm that Granny Teague has left him, and he lives there by himself. The only friend that he has is his mule, Homer. He talks to him all the time. He rubs him down in the evening. Kind of tickles his ears a little bit. Things that nobody ever done for him. But he learns about the power of touch with that animal. I'd have to say that was the one few, a uh, one thing in this world that loved Brodus and he knew it. He didn't want anything from him. He helped him out every day. And that was his best friend. Well, Henry is out walking one day like she normally did. She liked to be out in the fields by herself quiet and looking around and looking at the plants and smelling the plants and learning lots of things. She sees him out there talking and thinks, who is that man talking to? She looks at him. She looks around. She don't see anybody. She thinks, well, maybe he's talking to God. That's what I do when I'm out on my walks. Or maybe he's talking to the plants like I talk to the flowers sometimes. And she walks a little closer and peeks through the bushes. She realizes he's talking to that mule, telling him all the things about his heart's desire. Hmm. Now, he seems like a gentle man. Look how nice he is to that old mule. She goes on home and her and her mama, before you know it, quick as a rabbit, she's married to Brodus. Because a man don't realize sometimes when a woman sets her eye on you and she hatches her plan, sometimes if you're not careful, she'll grab you. <laughs> That's how I got the cameraman. He didn't know it. But anyway, they're married and time and time and time goes on as marriage does. Henry, as everybody likes to call the little Henry actually, notices that Brodus doesn't kiss her that much. When they have their company time in the evening, he likes to do the deed and then go be by himself a bit. And she thinks, well, Mama, that's strange because she can tell her Mama anything. 
Her mama says, well, you know, Brodus was always a strange little boy from house to house. You know that couldn't have been good for that child. Henry always cooks everything he wants, and the house is just so, and she thinks, I'm going to make him love me because she has decided that she loves Brodus. Henry is one that doesn't trust people that often either. You have to prove yourself to her because he's been gentle with her and so nice and sweet. She knows that he cares for her deeply, but he doesn't tell her, I love you, Henry. Henry, you're my girl, my sweetie. Back in the day, that wasn't what made a marriage. Could you provide? Were you a good man? Were you an honorable man? So one evening, Brodus comes in from the field, and he washes up like he normally does, and the dinner is on the stove cooking. He can't find Henry. Henrietta? Henrietta, he's looking for because he doesn't call her Henry. He thinks that that's just not proper in the way it's done. He finds her back in the bedroom laying down and thinks, Oh, Lord, she's died like Granny Teague's. But she's not died. She's waiting on him. So he comes in and she sits up, Brodus, Brodus, I want you to do something for me. I want you to come over here for a minute and sit down. He's worried, like, oh no, she's going to leave me. Because every time someone wants him to sit and talk quietly, they're going to either be mean to him or say something he doesn't like. But in this case, Henry has him undressed, lay down on the bed. She gets this oil. It smells like... What's that smell? He can't quite place it. She rubs her hands where they're hot and starts rubbing him down. It's, and before you know it, he's sleeping. He can't place that smell until he comes in the kitchen. Peach cobbler. That's what it is, peach cobbler. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of smiles. Henry knows that nobody has ever touched him has ever proven to him that these hands are not for hurting. They're for loving you. Be careful, girls. Rub them down. Bye-bye.